Angels are saying to you, amazing opportunities are flowing into your life with ease. You upgraded your self-image. Your confidence is growing. Your energy is seen and felt by people who value you. Every positive decision you make in the direction of your dreams is rewarded in ways that you may not initially perceive. Trust in the divine timing of everything and keep moving forward when one door closes. Doors close and open precisely when they are meant to. It is all working out even better than you could imagine. What is about to take place in your life will fill your entire spirit with joy and deep inner peace. Leave space for miracles to happen. You don't need to have everything figured out. Just keep taking conscious steps along the pathway on your journey, trusting that everything will work out. Believe with your entire soul that every event taking place in your life is designed to help you grow. Answers that you have been seeking are about to be revealed. Your prayers were heard and will be answered. Trust that each step you take in trust of the universal plan will be rewarded. You are illuminating a path forward that many people will benefit from. As you shine your light, those in need will follow. Share your gifts with the world daily. You are a very important piece of the cosmic puzzle. Play your part by sharing love. You learn to love yourself. Now your entire reality is upgrading to mirror this inner love you have created. Everything is energy, frequency, and vibration. You shut out the external distractions and double down on your dreams. The focused energy you are directing towards your goals and dreams is manifesting miracles. It is all going to make sense. Every single thing happening in your life right now is designed to help you expand. Everything you need to manifest the highest version of yourself is on the way. Source. Your angels and all of your ancestors are working to provide everything you need to grow into your highest potential. Deeply trust in every obstacle or challenge you currently face. You will never be handed a challenge that your soul cannot overcome. Celebrate these unique challenges and give thanks to Source for providing you the opportunity to evolve. You choose the difficult work day in and day out to become a better version of yourself. You don't wish it was easy. You accept that Source is providing you with the challenges your soul needs to reach a higher level of expression and awareness. You came to this Earth School to upgrade your spirit and to put your soul to the ultimate tests. Celebrate whatever life throws your way because it is a divine miracle in the form of life experience. Miracles are taking place in your life as a response to your inner work. You upgraded your way of thinking, living, and acting. Now everything in your life is mirroring these positive shifts. If you could see what is in store for you, a deep sense of inner peace would fill your spirit. It will be more than okay. Life is about to unfold in ways that you may currently not imagine. Move with faith that everything is happening to align miracles. You don't meet souls by accident. Everyone in your life enters for a specific reason. Pay close attention to who you are attracting into your life. The people and circumstances you attract are a mirror to who you are. You shifted your inner reality, and now your outer world is mirrored to this shift. You are in control of the habits, thoughts, words, and actions you embody. If you want to manifest a greater reality, you must become greater. You are deeply loved by the universe. It is your divine nature to prosper. Once you accept that unconditional love is your birthright, you hold the ultimate scepter of transmutation. When something isn't in alignment with your path, send it love, forgiveness, and understanding. When you exude these qualities, all of the divine forces of the universe will bow to you. You hold the ultimate power to shift your life path now. 
Remember that your loved one is always with you in spirit. Take time to honor their memory and celebrate the time you shared together. Reflect on the lessons they taught you and the joy they brought to your life. Allow yourself to feel the sadness of their absence, but also the warmth of their presence in your heart. Reach out to those who knew them and share stories and memories. Connect with them in the ways that bring you comfort, whether it's through prayer, music, or a special activity. And when you feel overwhelmed, take a moment to be still and remember that your loved one is always with you. Trusting me is the alternative to falling into despair or escaping into unreality. When you're in the midst of adversity, it can be hard to think clearly. Yet this is when it's vitally important to make wise decisions. Sometimes it's as if choices are swirling around you, waiting for you to grab onto the right one. However, there is one choice that is always a pro and always effective. The decision to trust me with all your heart and mind. If you're on the verge of sliding into the depths of despair, stop and declare your trust in me. Whisper it. Speak it. Shout it. Spend some time thinking about all the reasons you have for being confident in me. Remember and rejoice in my endless, unfailing love for you. If you've been numbing your pain through denial of reality, expressing your trust can bring you into contact with ultimate reality. Me. Confide in me, beloved, for I am infinitely knowing. I understand everything about your circumstances, and I will help you. God is not withholding a good man from you. Maybe he is waiting for you to finally let go of the doubt and limiting belief that thinks he doesn't want you to be happily in love right now. Maybe he wants to heal you from the thoughts that tell you that you're not worthy of receiving the love you dream of. Maybe his heart is yearning for you to finally recognize how absolutely lovable and beautiful that you really are, standing firm in believing that you are worthy and ready in this moment to be with a man who adores you ardently and wholeheartedly, because indeed, you are enough. God never promised that life would always be fair. In fact, he warns us of just the opposite. People aren't perfect. We all make mistakes and bad decisions. You may have been hurt by others in the past, but what's most important is how you choose to deal with that hurt. When you harbor hurts and offenses, it keeps you stuck in the past. It only causes harm in your life. If you want to move forward in joy and peace, you have to choose forgiveness. Yes, forgiveness is a choice, and it has nothing to do with the person who hurt you. Forgiveness is the choice to hand your hurts over to God and let Him make up the difference. When we choose to extend forgiveness, that's when we choose to receive His forgiveness. Today, choose God's way. Choose forgiveness and choose to move forward in the blessing and victory He has prepared for you. Father, thank you for the gift of forgiveness. Today I open my heart and mind to you. I ask that you help me understand your truth about forgiveness so that I can be set free. I love you and bless you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that as a child of God you are highly favored? No matter what you may have done in the past, as soon as you make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, you have favor with God. Mary didn't understand how or why she had God's favor or what that favor was for. At that moment, she didn't know that she was chosen as a pure and holy vessel to bring Christ to the world. Friend, you have God's favor for the very same reason as Mary because God chose you and made you a pure and holy vessel to bring Christ to your home, workplace, and even the world. Stay focused on sharing the message of God's love with all those you come in contact with. And remember that today and every day, 
you are highly favored and the Lord is with you. God, I have an awesome responsibility to share your message with the world. It is my gift to you to embrace that calling in Jesus' name. Amen. Before God elevates you, He is going to show you everybody's heart around you, so you will know who to take with you and who to love from a distance once you have entered your promised land. Elevation has always required separation, and it always will. Know that everybody can't go. All around you, God's goodness is on display. The question is, do you see it? The scripture talks about how God was in the midst of people, but they knew him not. Too many times God is working in our lives, showing us favor, protecting us, sending us healing, but we don't recognize his goodness. For example, if you're in a crowded parking lot and a car backs out so you can get a front row space, that's the goodness of God. If you're going through a difficult time and a friend stops by out of the blue and cheers you up, that's the goodness of God. We have to remember not to take the little things for granted. All through the day we should be saying, Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my spouse. Thank you for the opportunity that you have given me. Today, be on the lookout for his goodness. Remember, what you seek, you will find. Seek him and thank him for his faithfulness and blessing upon every area of your life. Father God, thank you for every good and perfect gift that you have given me. Thank you for ordering my steps and guiding me with your word. I love you and praise you today for your faithfulness and look forward to the good things you have in store for my future in Jesus' name. Amen. The fact we are reminded God has not given us a spirit of fear suggests that there is a spirit of fear, and I'd say it's running rampant. Fear will keep you from fulfilling your purpose more than anything else. Fear of failure, fear of people, fear of challenges, fear of criticism, fear of change, fear of the unknown, fear of disappointment, fear of embarrassment, fear of inadequacy. The list is endless. One reason we have been given a measure of faith is so that we don't have to bow down to fear. Sometimes you have to choose to stir up that gift of faith and move forward, even while you may be feeling the actual feeling of fear. The feeling of fear is not the same as a spirit of fear. Do it afraid until you're not. Don't allow fear to rob you from stepping into the promises of God for your life. There's no doubt that the greatest fight you will, save to fight on an ongoing basis, is the fight of faith. The enemy is a liar, deceiver, and accuser. He is relentless. He will try to make you think that God is not good, that God is unfaithful, that God is mad at you, that you are hopeless, helpless, dispensable, or useless, that you are unloved, unseen, or unwanted, that your failures or mistakes have disqualified you from your purpose, that your limitations can limit what God wants to do in and through your life, that the thing keeping you up at night is beyond redemption, that you will never get through it, beyond it, or over it. You will not believe or hold on to the promises of God by default. You must be proactive. You must fill your mind and heart with the things God says about you so that you have the ability to counter the lies of the enemy. It's a fight of faith, not a walk in the park. Don't give the enemy any real estate in your mind. Declare and decree the truth of God's word in your life. Listening is a lost art today. We can be so concerned about expressing our thoughts and opinions that we don't listen closely to others or even to God. If we're not careful, distractions and busyness can drown out the voice that matters most in our lives, the voice of our Heavenly Father.
The good news is that you can learn to tune out the negative noise of the world and start listening to God's voice for hopeful, positive, faith-filled thoughts. Be receptive and listen for His still, small voice on the inside of you. God speaks not only through the Bible, but also through godly counsel and His Holy Spirit. All it takes is a simple prayer like the one Samuel prayed in 1 Samuel 3.10 when he said to God, I am listening. Then be ready to listen for His answer. God, thank you for answering my prayers. Give me the wisdom and discernment to hear your still small voice through the loudness of this world. In Jesus' name, amen. God, thank you for answering my prayers. Give me the wisdom and discernment to hear your still small voice through the loudness of this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you living the abundant life Jesus came to give? I'm not talking about living in the fanciest house or driving the newest car. No. His promise of abundant life goes way beyond material things that this world offers. Abundant life means life to the full. That means no matter what is going on around you, you stay in faith because you know God is still in control. It means having peace in the midst of a storm, being able to sleep at night, and having good relationships. You can have joy when things are uncertain. It's easy to look at that verse and think, God is going to give me abundant life someday. But the truth is that God wants you to have an abundant life today. Don't waste another second living in mediocrity or settling for less than God's best. No, it's time to shake off that barely get by attitude and let go of what didn't work out. Instead, make room to receive his hope, joy, strength, and favor. Declare that you are living an abundant life every day. Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus so that I can have eternal life. I know that you want the best for me. Help me to keep my heart and mind focused on you so that I can walk in your ways all the days of my life in Jesus' name. Amen. In scripture, a man came to Jesus and said, My little daughter is very sick. She is close to death. Will you come to my home and pray for her? Jesus agreed. But along the way, he kept getting stopped, one interruption after another. Finally, word came back to him saying, No need to come. You've waited too late. The little girl has died. The people were upset and very distraught. But Jesus said to them in Luke 8:50, Don't be afraid. If you will only believe, the little girl will be well. Notice the phrase, only believe. Jesus went to the home, laid hands on the little girl, and she came back to life. Are you facing a situation that seems impossible? Naturally, you don't see how you can get well, or how you can overcome the addiction, or how your family can ever be restored. God is saying to you what he said to them, If you will only believe, I will turn the situation around. If you only believe, breakthroughs are headed your way. Father, thank you for your hand of victory upon my life. Thank you for making a way even when there seems to be no way. I choose to stand in faith. I choose to believe, knowing that you are ready, willing, and able to cause me to overcome this life in Jesus' name. Amen. The word enthusiasm comes from the Greek word theos, is God. When you're enthusiastic, it simply means you are full of God. When you get up in the morning excited about your future, recognize that day is a gift and go out with a spring in your step, pursuing your goals and passionate about life, then God will breathe in your direction. Studies even tell us that people who are enthusiastic get better breaks. They're promoted more often. That's not a coincidence. When you're full of passion, you have the favor of God. Remember, 
God didn't breathe his life into us to drag through the day. He didn't create us in his image, crown us with his favor, and equip us with his power to just go through the motions of life. You may have had some setbacks, the wind may have been taken out of your sail, but this is a new day. God wants to breathe new life back into you. If you'll get your fire back, get your passion back, the wind will start blowing once again. When you're in agreement with God, He can cause the winds of favor to shift in your direction. Heavenly Father, thank you for another sunrise, another day, another opportunity to praise you and pursue the dreams you've given me. Help me to stay filled with your joy, which is strength, so I can serve you with my whole heart in everything that I do in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you been crying out to the Lord for something? Maybe there's a situation in your life that's been overwhelming and you feel like you've done everything you know to do but can't see a way through. Be encouraged today because we serve a God of justice. He is faithful to His Word and He will always be faithful to you. Not only is He a God of justice, He is your vindicator. One thing we have to remember is that our battle is not with the person who may have wronged us. Scripture says that the enemy of our souls, the accuser of the brethren, is our ultimate enemy. Know today that God already has a plan. He already knows the future, and He will bring about justice. Before eternity is through, He will right the wrongs that have been done to you. Your part is to release the situation into his capable hands. You don't have to straighten everybody out or right the wrongs in your life. That's God's job. Trust him with your future because the God of justice is working things out on your behalf. Father God, today I release every care, every concern, every situation that is beyond my control. I trust that you are working things out for my good and you are bringing justice to me. Thank you for your goodness and faithfulness in my life in Jesus' name. Amen. In nature, it doesn't make sense that you will have more if you give more. But God's kingdom operates on the principle of sowing and reaping. This is one of the first things he established with Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis. He said, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. We have to realize that everything we need in this life has been given to us in seed form. We set the blessing of God into motion in our lives when we plant those seeds and give what we have. Galatians tell us that whatever we sow, we will reap. Seeds produce after their own kind. If you sow apple seeds, you reap apple trees. If you sow kindness and blessing, you reap kindness and blessing in the future. If you sow financial seeds, you'll reap a financial harvest. Today, no matter what you need, you have it in seed form. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you how to plant and water that seed. Trust Him because He is faithful to His Word. Know that when you give, it will come back to you in greater measure. When you give more, you have more. So sow a seed and watch what God will do. Father, thank you for your word, which is the truth that sets me free. Today, I choose to sow good seeds so I can reap a good harvest. Guide my thoughts today. Direct my path. Use me for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Trusting me is the alternative to falling into despair or escaping into unreality. When you're in the midst of adversity, it can be hard to think clearly. Yet this is when it's vitally important to make wise decisions. Sometimes it's as if choices are swirling around you, waiting for you to grab onto the right one. However, there is one choice that is always a pro and always effective the decision to trust me with all your heart and mind. 
If you're on the verge of sliding into the depths of despair, stop and declare your trust in me. Whisper it, speak it, shout it. Spend some time thinking about all the reasons you have for being confident in me. Remember and rejoice in my endless, unfailing love for you. If you've been numbing your pain through denial of reality, expressing your trust can bring you into contact with ultimate reality. Me. Confide in me, beloved, for I am infinitely knowing. I understand everything about your circumstances, and I will help you. Your future is glorious, overflowing with goodness and hope. His mercy and favor shall follow you all the days of your life. Sweetheart, you are so much closer than you think, and I know that hope deferred has caused your precious heart to grow sick with disappointment. But God truly has so many beautiful things on the way to you. If only you knew the abundance of your destiny, your soul would swell with indescribable happiness. Even in the midst of your pain, He is still making a way. I know you have waited for longer than you expected, but don't ever doubt His love for you. He would never leave or forsake you. I know it's hard to see it right now, but your Heavenly Father needs you to hold on, and He is working while you wait. Trust in Him and do not lean on your own understanding, for He will bless you wonderfully and superabundantly according to His perfect plan for your life. The Almighty has the sweetest heart, carrying the purest intentions behind any prayers that seem unanswered. For every decision of the Almighty flows graciously from the abundance of His love. Heaven is absolutely on your side, always for you and never against you, even if it doesn't feel that way at present. He desires to see you happy, for it is within the fullness of His affection that the Divine One remains fervently devoted to make the necessary decisions to fulfill His beautiful wishes for you. And though your heart may not fully comprehend why heaven's ways differ so greatly to your preferences and desires, your soul must never waver upon believing that His love for you is perfect and everlasting, flawlessly abundant without fault. You have nothing to fear at all, sweetheart, for He holds all things beautifully within His control, and He will not disappoint you, for all things are working marvelously for good. But darling, what if God's timing is sooner than you think? You've come too far to lose hope now. His unfailing love is saturated all over you, faithful to bloom, His beautiful promises in divine timing. Your sweet heart has been waiting so patiently and so fervently on Him. He has seen those precious eyes of yours pour out an ocean of sorrowful tears. And every heartbreak and overwhelming pain that your precious soul has endured will truly never be wasted. For He will replenish the broken and empty places of your heart, filling you with hope and felicity, beautiful bliss and glorious expectation for the wondrous things that are to come. This is your reminder, nothing that is for you will ever get away from you. Nothing that is for you will ever allow for timing or distance or circumstance to rob you of its presence in your life. It prevails, because connection doesn't need proximity to survive. You can touch people without touching them. You can impact people without being beside them. You can let people know that they mean something to you without needing to speak it to them over coffee or when you're laying beside one another at night. You are not going to be forgotten, not by the people who have felt something because of you. You are a part of so many stories. You are the reason why someone smiles whenever they hear a certain song. You are the reason why someone has known what it means to be a friend or to truly be seen by another human being, loved by another soul. You are the reason why someone feels validated or hopeful in this world. 
You are that goodness for those in your life who have connected with the heart of you, with those who have seen something rare and beautiful within you. And if you are worried that a new connection will fade, that you were on the cusp of so much, that your heart was just learning how to speak the name of someone who quickly became a hopeful part of your life, do not see this delay as an ending. Have patience with the timing of your life. If something is meant to bloom, it will bloom. It will follow you into a new season. If that depth is meant to carry over into the next chapter of your life, it will. Because all of the best things are perennial. They are timeless. They do not wither away in the winter of life. They sustain themselves. They survive. You have to trust in that. I think we've been taught from such a young age that happiness is meant to be this big, all-consuming thing. That it is this moment that cracks open our bones and changes our lives and sweeps all of the weight inside of us away. That it is something that is awarded to us, gifted to us by the world. That it is something we are always in pursuit of until we find it. And so, we are always waiting waiting for this experience, this simplification in life, this aha moment where the wounds are all healed and the growth is all organized neatly within our rib cages and our hearts aren't afraid of loving anymore and the warmth never leaves. But I don't think happiness is big or infinite at all. I think real happiness, true happiness, exists in the acceptance of the fact that we will always be balancing what is light and dark within ourselves. I think real happiness, true happiness, exists in the quiet, in the small things, in a morning cup of coffee, in the sound of your mother's voice on the other end of the phone. I think real happiness, true happiness, is believing that you are meant to be here, that you are meant to take up space in this world. I think real happiness, true happiness, is finding the human beings who take care of you, not in a materialistic way, but rather finding the human beings who take care of your soul, who take care of even the most chaotic parts of who you are. I think real happiness, true happiness, is all around you, at all times, pinned and blooming in the things you stopped paying attention to because you were always searching for more. Flowers on your walk to work, the intensity in the air when you meet someone and you know they're going to change your life, the way your stomach flips when you hear your favorite song, the way your person's eyelashes feel as they blink across your neck when you're holding them. And I don't think happiness is something you find or that it is this destination you get to where the night never comes and you are bulletproof and unaffected by the mayhem. I think the mayhem will always exist. We are literally made from it. We wouldn't even be here if it weren't for the crashing and the banging of atoms within this universe. No. I think happiness exists in the understanding that the pain holds just as much importance as the beauty. I think happiness exists in finding the things that make us feel known and special and at peace in this world, no matter how small or insignificant they feel, and let them save us. I think happiness exists in learning how to embrace the dark in learning how to see it as the very thing that makes us appreciate the light. The truth is, life will amaze you in the most stunning ways, and it will also break your heart. Life will give you the kinds of lessons that grow you and build you and help you to bloom into the person you have always hoped to be. But it will also carry within it the kinds of losses that stay with you, that change you and shape you in uncomfortable ways. Life will demand for you to do the work, for you to understand yourself, for you to heal even when it hurts, for you to be brave, for you to fight for yourself. At the end of the day, you will come to realize that bravery isn't a battlefield. It isn't fast cars or stunted risk. 
Bravery is the quietest thing you will ever know. Bravery is getting up in the morning when your bones are heavy and your heart does not want the light to crack within it. Bravery is leaning into what aches. It is looking it in the face, giving it a name and confronting it for what it is. Bravery is being gentle with yourself, especially when it isn't convenient or easy, especially when you are not a shining example of the person you strive to be. Bravery is forgiving yourself. It is the work you do within your soul that is dirty and difficult and demanding. But most of all, bravery is the way you stretch towards the light. It is the way you bloom in the direction of goodness, even when you may not know what you are reaching for. Bravery is allowing yourself to believe that you are growing, even when it does not feel like it. Bravery is trusting yourself, even when you do not recognize the path. Bravery is knowing that there is more for you, that you will have the ability to save yourself like you always have before, that you will survive. I hope you learn how to let go of everyone's opinion of your life. I hope you start to see, from a place that lives deep within you, that there is no universally correct way to live a life that is solely your own. Every human being has different goals, has different concepts of what happiness looks like, and has a different vision of what it truly means to be alive. And because of that, people will judge you. The world will try to change you, but you must continue to move in your own direction. You must continue to go at your own pace, because if you allow that to alter your path, you're going to end up living someone else's life. I hope you learn how to make your life your own. I hope you learn how to make your time here something you are proud of. I hope you learn how to let go of the comparison you hold so closely to your chest. I hope you strive to dismantle the distractions. I hope you strive to see beyond what is manicured and what is filtered in this life. You are a real human being who is living and breathing in this world, who is healing through and moving through seasons of beauty and seasons of change and seasons of evolution each and every single day. Your experience in this world will never be perfect, will never be faultless, but it will be real. It will be honest. I hope you learn how to embrace that. I hope you learn how to let go of your tendency to favor distance over depth. I hope you learn how to open to this world, how to let love pour into your life. We often protect ourselves from seeming too eager or too interested. We hold our feelings back because we don't want to seem overly emotional or tender. We silence our instincts, we bankrupt our souls, and at the end of the day, we feel alone. I hope you learn how to let go of your fear. I hope you learn how to remind yourself that there is nothing wrong with vulnerability, with being human, with unhinging your rib cage and sharing your heart with this world. There is beauty to be found in being the person who cares. So care. I think we've been taught from such a young age that happiness is meant to be this big, all-consuming thing. That it is this moment that cracks open our bones and changes our lives and sweeps all of the weight inside of us away. That it is something that is awarded to us, gifted to us by the world. That it is something we are always in pursuit of until we find it. And so we are always waiting. Waiting for this experience, this simplification in life, this aha moment where the wounds are all healed and the growth is all organized neatly within our rib cages and our hearts aren't afraid of loving anymore and the warmth never leaves. But I don't think happiness is big or infinite at all. I think real happiness true happiness exists in the acceptance of the fact that we will always be balancing what is light and dark within ourselves. I think real happiness, true happiness, 
exists in the quiet, in the small things, in a morning cup of coffee, in the sound of your mother's voice on the other end of the phone. I think real happiness, true happiness, is believing that you are meant to be here, that you are meant to take up space in this world. I think real happiness, true happiness, is finding the human beings who take care of you, not in a materialistic way, but rather finding the human beings who take care of your soul, who take care of even the most chaotic parts of who you are. I think real happiness, true happiness, is all around you, at all times, pinned and blooming in the things you stopped paying attention to because you were always searching for more. Flowers on your walk to work, the intensity in the air when you meet someone and you know they're going to change your life, the way your stomach flips when you hear your favorite song, the way your person's eyelashes feel as they blink across your neck when you're holding them, and I don't think happiness is something you find or that it is this destination you get to where the night never comes and you are bulletproof and unaffected by the mayhem. I think the mayhem will always exist. We are literally made from it. We wouldn't even be here if it weren't for the crashing and the banging of atoms within this universe. No, I think happiness exists in the understanding that the pain holds just as much importance as the beauty. I think happiness exists in finding the things that make us feel known and special and at peace in this world no matter how small or insignificant they feel, and let them save us. I think happiness exists in learning how to embrace the dark, in learning how to see it as the very thing that makes us appreciate the light. One thing I am certain about God is that He will never take something away from you without the intention of replacing it with something much better. That's what He does. Maybe you are feeling frustrated right now. You may have lost your job. Whatever it is, know that he will never leave you empty. He will replace everything you lost and open the right doors for you at the right time. Yes, things can be very painful, difficult, and uncertain right now. It takes tremendous faith to say, God has something better for me. But sometimes, you just have to stop and look back at what God has already done for you in the past, and remember that if He did it back then, He's faithful to do it. God removes it to replace it with anything valuable to you. Pain does exist, but it will end at one point. Only those who embrace the pain and let it go will truly appreciate and be grateful to pain. If you are in pain, you should be grateful because pain can teach you to be stronger. Pain is like your teacher also. Pain is like a lesson. Pain is not always a bad thing. But of course, you can never learn from the same teacher forever. In case you do learn from the same teacher over and over again, it means you always fail the test. And that means you need to pass it in order to go on to learn the new life lesson. People who repeat the same mistakes will come to experience the same problems. They will have the same pain. That hurts. And the pain really could bring down a man if he lets pain control his life long enough. Hardship is part of life. Hardship is also a life lesson. If you are careless, then your life will be hard. If you remain the same, then the same exact thing will happen and make your life even harder and harder. To live your dream, you will need to overcome many obstacles clearly mentioned above. Subscribe our YouTube channel to reach 40,000 divine subscribers soon. Please share this video to 100 people only if you love God Jesus. And share super thanks. Type Amen to affirm, thanks for watching.